It's great social studies and welcome back to another day of online learning. I know it's been quite a while since we've had one of these lecture videos, so it's been uh, a mixture of the Ancient Greece exam as well as the DRP ELA exam, so it's been a lot of testing. Uh, but we are moving forward with the last topic of the year, so this is really exciting. Uh, we're going to be talking about Ancient Rome. And before we get started, I just want to make a few announcements. We are posting the fourth quarter grades on, I believe, the end of the week, uh, if not Monday. So you should be getting those grades rather soon. If you are missing any homework assignments, you need to get them into me by the latest today because I am entering my grades by Friday. Uh, also, you do have to make sure that you do take the Ancient Greece exam, even if you were absent on Tuesday, because that will count towards your uh, marking period 5 grade, as well as performance test number 9, the essay about Alexander the Great. If you have not handed that in yet, you lose 2 points per day that it's late, so you need to make sure that you get it in uh, so that you can start off the 5th marking period on the right foot with a good, solid GPA. So like I said earlier, today we are starting our unit on Ancient Rome. Before we get started, I want you to take a look at these two maps on the Do Now slide. So like I said, Ancient Rome is our last topic, and it is actually located in a country we call Italy. So I know many of you are familiar with Italy. It looks like a boot. Uh, it's actually just west of Ancient Greece, which we just talked about. You can actually see the GRE uh, on the left map. It's literally right to the west. Uh, the ancient Romans are responsible for conquering the ancient Greeks in 146 BCE like we talked about, but also uh, they did build a rather large empire like the ancient Greeks did when they were in control of ancient Greece. So like I said before we get started we're going to take a look at two maps of ancient Rome. They're physical maps, so that means that they show the waterways, the different elevations of the land, as well as the type of landform that it is. So take a look at the maps and then make a list of observations that you make about the geography because it is a key part of understanding ancient Rome is understanding its geography because the geography does influence the way societies are developed and how they can live within the environment. So take a minute, pause the video, and then answer the do now. Make sure you post an answer to the do now in the Google Classroom post, uh, as usual. So ancient Rome, today our focus is the geography of Rome, because it's important to understand, like I said, the geography of a place, because it impacts the way a society is developed. So ancient Rome, like we said, is in the country known as Italy. Uh, Italy is a peninsula just like ancient Greece was, or is rather. Greece is a peninsula. It remains a peninsula just like Italy was, is rather. That means that it's surrounded by three bodies of water. So three sides of the land are surrounded by water. That's important because it does impact Italy's ability to uh, connect with other places as well as it also serves as a natural barrier because it's cut off from other inland areas that they could easily walk or, or ride horses to. Like other places we have studied, uh, similar to Greece, the uh, oceans do play a large role in trade and travel, so we will get to talk about that a little bit later, but for now know that Italy is a peninsula and Rome is located in western Italy. So you should have made some observations about the physical features of the landform that you studied in the do now. Uh, similar to Greece, ancient Rome does have points of high elevation. That means that there are hills and mountains that are located throughout the city. So hills and mountains serve as what we call a natural barrier. That's a positive and a negative thing. On the positive end, it protects the Italians or the Romans from invaders that could come from land. So it protects them because it's kind of hard to travel through these types of landforms. But on the negative side, it does make it rather difficult to trade and connect with outside peoples. So it kind of disconnects them from outside opportunities. However, unlike ancient Greece, in Rome, the hills and mountains aren't as... Uh, 
influential in the sense that they aren't as difficult to pass through as they were in ancient Greece. So because of that, they had a, a easier time communicating with one another and it was not as much of a negative natural barrier as it was in Greece. Like I said earlier, ancient Rome is uh, surrounded by three bodies of water, uh, the Adriatic Sea, the Tyrrhenian Sea, and the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, as you can see also, the Ionian Sea is on the south. Uh, that is also a portion of the Mediterranean Sea. Um, so being surrounded by water could be beneficial in the sense that you can establish a lot of trading ports at the coasts of these different seas and you could trade with other areas that are across the water. Also, uh, since the water is rather not as widespread as other areas like we studied like ancient China, the travel time is not as significant. So it's rather easy for the ancient Romans to get to other places in Europe like Greece and France, and then south uh, towards the Mediterranean Sea, they could get to Africa. Before we move on, I want you to consider what you know about ancient Greece and about the impact that the hills and mountains had on ancient Greece. So I want you to think about that when you answer this question. Since the hills in Rome were easier to pass through than in Greece, how might that have impacted the Romans' ability to unite? What kind of society might they have had? Do you think the ancient Romans had a city-state? Or, or rather, many city-states? Or do you think they might have had an empire? And why? So make sure you answer both parts of the question and you post an answer to the pop question in the Google Classroom. So moving forward... Yes, the ancient Romans were very different from the ancient Greeks from the start. The ancient Romans were focused on developing a united empire, kind of like what Alexander the Great tried to do with Greece after being ruled by many city-states for so long. The Romans focused on being united and having one government under one leader. So they had an empire. It wasn't just Italy that the Romans controlled, like we said. If you take a look at the map on the bottom of the screen, the ancient Romans had control of Greece and other portions of Europe as well as Asia and parts of Northern Africa. So their empire was not just in Italy. It stretched a long distance. So kind of like Alexander the Great created a huge empire, kind of like the Mongols created a huge empire. They had their home base in Italy, but they expanded their control outwards. So this is a closer look at the, the map of the ancient Roman Empire. So like we said at, in the yellow, that is the beginning portion of the empire. So this is the earliest, what it looked like. Obviously, the empire started in Rome, which is in Italy, but then they moved west into Europe and conquered a lot of uh, Western and Northern Europe as well as Southern Europe and they also went south to conquer uh, later parts of Africa and then like Alexander the Great did the Romans moved east and they conquered Greece then they went on to conquer parts of Asia as well as Mesopotamia ending at roughly this a similar portion of Asia that Alexander the Great did. So they did conquer a rather large empire and they did have control over this empire for a rather long time. Uh, and we will get to talk about what the empire looked like, what their beliefs were, and how they organized this empire and how they were successful at conquering such a large empire. For now, what I want you to remember, though, is that we are talking about the geography of Italy specifically. So when we talk about the geography of ancient Rome, we're not talking about the entire span of the empire. We're talking specifically about the city of Rome and how the people in the city of Rome lived. One very important feature of the landscape of ancient Rome was the Tiber River. So if we know anything about rivers, like we learned about the Tigris and Euphrates in Mesopotamia or the Nile River in Egypt, rivers can be a very valuable resource to people who do not have supermarkets. Even though most of the land was hilly and rough terrain, because 
Italy has many rivers running through it, including the Tiber River, which is very close to the city of Rome. This land was very fertile, so the soil was fertile, which means that we know that it's nutrient-rich because the rivers would overflow, fertilizing the land as well as giving it water to stay moist so that crops can grow. The Romans used this fertile soil to survive. They grew their crops on it to feed themselves. So similar to a lot of the river valley civilizations we've studied, ancient Rome looked very similar to this in that sense where they did focus a lot on farming and raising animals and supporting themselves and feeding themselves through their environment. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at a reading about the geography of ancient Rome. So we're going to take a little bit deeper look into how the geography impacted the Romans. Uh, you are going to do a reading and you are going to answer some questions based on the reading. As always, you have to make sure that you're answering the correct questions at your academic level, either A, I, or B. And make sure to always restate the questions in your answers. And as always, please make sure that you try to submit the classwork by the end of the day. I know you're probably all exhausted after having such a long weekend and then taking my test as well as the DRP test. So I don't blame you if you can't get it in on time, but I do suggest trying to stay on course with the class because I actually have seen a lot of you crazily trying to submit all of the classwork now that you know that the marking period's ending and I'm not going to count it as full credit so make sure that you're submitting it roughly at the time that it's due because you will lose credit and you will lose participation and classwork points for not getting it in on time. As always, make sure you also answer the closing summary. You can do this at either in the Google Classroom post for the do now, or you could write your closing summary directly on the sheet that you submit with the answers to the questions for the reading activity. Whichever you choose, just make sure you do answer the closing summary because it does help you summarize the key idea of the lesson, which is how did geography, how did the geography of Italy, rather Rome, impact its development? So how did the geography positively impact the ancient Romans? How did the geography maybe negatively impact the ancient Romans? Think about that question after you do the reading. Also, you can use what you learned in the lecture video to help you. If you have any questions about anything, please do let me know. If you have any questions still about the Alexander the Great essay, please let me know. Many of you have still not submitted it, and it is 30% of your grade, so I suggest that if you are still confused or maybe don't know what to do, you contact me so that you can get the assignment in as quickly as possible to avoid losing any future points. If you have any other questions regarding anything else, please don't hesitate to ask me. I am here to help you always. Um, if not, I hope you enjoy your day and I look forward to reading all your brilliant answers to the classwork.